Hello and welcome to the drag and drop UI tutorial. In this tutorial, you're gonna be learning how to drag and drop UI elements. So the first thing we're gonna do is right click here in our hierarchy, create a new UI, and we'll create a canvas. And inside this canvas, we'll create a image. This just gives us a blank image here, which is just a square. And I'm actually just gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna move this one over to the side and the second one, I'm gonna make it green. And this first one, we're gonna call it draggable. The second one, we'll call it drop here. And now with this draggable image, I'm gonna right click to add an FSM. Now there are actions, if you look up UI actions in here, you could find some things like UI on begin drag event, or on drag event, on drop event, and some other things here, and drag event, stuff like that. So there are actions for what I'm about to teach you. But what I'm gonna teach you today is instead of using these actions, we're gonna use UI system events. Now there may be cases in which you'd prefer to use these actions, but for a lot of cases, just adding in a few states and then giving them some global UI event transitions is a really great solution. So I'm gonna come over here to add a global transition, UI events, and on this one, I'm gonna start with UI begin drag. This state will have everything that happens in the first instant that the user begins dragging this image. But once this state runs through everything it needs to run through, it will then go over to a new global transition, UI events, UI drag. So this is the first moment that they click and start dragging it. But right after everything processes in the state, we go over here to UI drag. And so what's happening, we'll see if we play this. Now you'll notice down here, we have a one, a zero and a zero, okay? These represent how many times the FSM has gone through these states. Right now we have one for state one because that's where we start. But we have zero for these two because we haven't clicked or began dragging this square yet. So take notice of how this UI begin drag is just going to quickly flash and then immediately it's just going to stay green on this as we drag around the square. So here we go. You see that? So it has that instance where it kind of does something, but it stays here while I was dragging the thing. Now the thing is it's stuck here because there's nowhere else for it to go. And that's where if we add in a new state, you could put in the global transition. UI events, end drag. So you have UI begin drag, UI drag, and end drag. This is the moment it starts, the whole time while you're actually dragging it, and then the moment you stop dragging it. Now, alone, this isn't really gonna do anything. So you'll see if I press play, if I try dragging the square around, it doesn't do anything, but at least when I let go of it, it goes to UI end drag. Let me show you that again. So you can hear my mouse. Okay, and I try dragging that around, I'm still holding down. So right now, if you look at the arrow that points down from UI drag down to state three, you'll see it's not doing anything right now. Nothing is sending the event of UI drag. Nothing is queuing that transition. And that's because I'm not moving my mouse. I'm not dragging the UI element. But as soon as I start moving my mouse, which I'll do right now, you could see that arrow lights up green. And then when I stop, the arrow turns back to gray. And then when I let go of my mouse, let's see if you can hear this and you'll also take a look at the FSM. We end up on UI end drag. So what these events are good for are recognizing how the cursor is interacting with an element, but that's all it does itself, right? Like I wasn't actually dragging this around. This wasn't moving around. So to make this square actually draggable, what I could do is add in a UI get last pointer data info action. Okay, so I'm gonna put this inside of the UI drag state. Okay, we'll call this state dragging and call this one begin drag and this one end drag. Okay, so in the dragging state, we have this one action, UI get last pointer data info. So what this is doing is it's just getting our cursor info. And what we want is this delta. So this is a vector two that we can store in a new variable. We'll just call this mouse position. And then what you're gonna want is a translate advanced 
Currently, Translate Advanced does not ship default with Playmaker, and so you've got to hop over to the ecosystem for that. You can just type in Translate Advanced, and that's where you can get it right there. Then you just hit the Get button for it, but you can see I already have it imported. And here in the Vector 2 option, we're going to choose our mouse position. Now, there's something really important to note, is that we have the option here for every frame, but this is a bit of a redundancy and can cause some problems because by default, when we're dragging, it's kind of as if all the actions in our dragging state are running every frame as long as we're dragging. Because remember when I was clicking and holding, as long as I was moving my mouse, it was sending off this transition. So it's kind of like this state is getting fired off every frame and it's constantly updating. So by checking every frame here, that can cause some problems because it would stay here in the state without ever finishing, even when we weren't actually using UI drag. So you do not want to have every frame checked. And in the space, I'm gonna change this to world. And then I'm also gonna deselect this per second. So now when we run this, I can select this and drag it around. And when I let go of it, it stops moving it around. And that's because it's only updating the position of it and using that translate action as long as I'm dragging it. But when I let go and I'm not dragging anymore, it stops updating its position according to the mouse. And so it's as if we've dropped it. Okay, so that's UI begin drag, UI drag and UI end drag. Just to give you an idea of how begin and end drag work, in this UI begin drag, I'll put in a UI graphic set color. And we'll say that when I'm dragging it, it turns yellow. And that when I end dragging it, it'll turn white again. Okay, so now when I press play and I start dragging it, it turns yellow, right? It flashed through that first state, begin drag. And then when I let go of it, it turns back to white. Now there is another event here, but this one does not belong here. Instead, we'll go over to our drop here. We'll add an FSM, add another state, and here I'll add a global transition, UI events, UI drop. Now what UI drop looks for is if I am dragging something, if I have selected and, and I'm currently dragging something, and then if my mouse pointer is over the item that has this UI drop on it, and then I let go of the thing I was dragging while I'm on top of this item, it recognizes that as a UI drop. So let's just watch that really quick. So I'm gonna move this right here so you can kind of keep an eye on both of these. Now I'm gonna drag and drop this around. You see that nothing's happening, right? Drag it over here. Okay, nothing's happening, drag it over here. I can also click on this as much as I want, nothing's happening. But if I'm clicking and dragging this, and if my mouse is now on this green square, and then I let go, it counts as a UI drop. Now it's also worth noting that it is paying attention to my cursor and not necessarily this image. So if I click and drag this square over here, and then I kind of put them so they're touching, and then I let go, it doesn't count as a UI drop. Now that might've been kind of hard to see. If we play this again, I'll just show you. Dragging the square, they're both touching, and then I let go, and nothing happens down here. Okay, it's not paying attention as to whether or not these items are let go on top of each other. It's paying attention only to the mouse. So as long as I'm dragging this and then I let go over here, that counts as a UI drop. What we could do is just add a little finish transition here, send off to another state, move this. We're not using this anymore right now. And instead, in here, I'll call this not over. So at this point, there wouldn't be anything over it. And what I've gone and done is added this box collider 2D. I have it set to is trigger. And that way we can use a trigger 2D event. Okay, and we're gonna be waiting for on trigger stay. I'm gonna go over to send event. We'll make a new event called hovering over. Okay, I'm gonna add this transition and it'll send off to the next state. We'll call this one hovering over. And in here, I'm gonna add in another trigger 2D event, but this time it's gonna be on trigger exit. And then we're gonna send the event not hovering over. And I'll send it back here. I'm just gonna lock that to the left. 
And in here, the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do, a git fsm bool and a bool test. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be getting a bool value from the thing that we're dragging. And that bool value will be representing whether or not the thing is currently being dragged. So if it's true, nothing's happening here. But if it's false, well, if it's not being dragged, then that means that we've let go of it. And so on these two conditions, the condition is that we're hovering over, right? And that it's not being dragged. That means that it has successfully been dropped on top of this. So let's go set that up in the draggable. And go over the draggable. Now I have our UI begin drag event, which sends to the begin drag state. And in here, I'm gonna put in a set bool value. And I'm gonna put it at the top and I'll call this is being dragged. And since we're on begin drag here, I'll set this value to true. And I'm just gonna copy this action and on end drag, I'm gonna paste it in. And I'll just move it up and I'm gonna set this to false once we've ended drag. Okay, so it's set to true the moment we pick it up and it's set to false the moment we drop it. And actually do not mind these. Over here in drop here, what I'm gonna do is set it up so we can get that bool information and then use it with this bool test. The first thing that needs to happen is over here in our not over state is we need to store the collider. So we'll call this one, make a new variable and call it draggable. Okay, so the draggable thing. So once this trigger does happen, we get it. And then in the hovering over, we can specify the game object, draggable. And if I select our draggable, go to my variables, and I'm just gonna copy this, and bring it back here. Okay, it's only the one FSM on there right now, so I don't need to put in the FSM name. But alternatively, you could also have dragged and dropped it in here, and then use this to get that stuff. And then after you got all this for free, you can change it back to draggable. Okay, and then we're gonna store that value. I'm gonna copy this. New variable is being dragged. We're checking every frame. And that bool variable is being dragged. We're also checking every frame. We don't want it to do anything if it's true, but if it's false, we'll send this event called dropped. Okay, I'm gonna add that transition and we'll send it over here. We'll call this one dropped. And here, what I'm gonna do is something, just a simple set parent. And here, I'm gonna change the owner, specify object. We're gonna say the draggable. And the parent, I'm setting it to this drop here. This drop here, by the way, is coming from this initialization state that has a get owner action, right? So it's getting the owner, drop here. That's what we're using. We're gonna set the draggable as a child of this drop here. Okay, and I'm gonna do this reset local position and reset local rotation. So that way it just kind of snaps to the center of this. Now for this example, what I've done is if I just focus in on this here, I made the draggable a little smaller just by coming over to the scale tool and shrinking it down a little bit. That way we could see it snap in a little better. Okay, so I'm gonna press play. And now you can see that when we pick this up, even though my cursor is down here in the bottom left of the square, when the top right of the square is touching, it goes over to the hovering over state. And when it's not, it goes back to the not over. Okay, so you can see that it's now recognizing when one is on the other. And if I let go, it snaps to it. And that's how you could begin to program your own drag and drop system using Playmaker. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.